we continue our discussion on glomerular diseases again i have a question for you stop the video to read the question here's a question for you right mark your answer now the topic of discussion is focal and segmental glomerulosclerosis let's learn the basic concept about fsgs <clears throat> and fsgs account for about 10 to 15% cases of nephrotic syndrome okay idiopathic variety of nephrotic syndrome in adults and in fact it's the commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome in hispanics and african americans that means a particular segment of the society is involved more commonly involved okay and it's again more commonly involved seen in the adults in the age group of around 20 to 30 years so you can see young adults are more likely to involve in this particular disease now let's talk about etiology of FSGS. Majority of time is idiopathic. There is no reason for that, and this is the majority of the cases. But at time it may be associated with certain disease or drugs, what so-called secondary causes. Right let's see what are the important secondary causes very very important hiv well out of the four primary uh, glomerular pathology minimal change membranous minimal change membranous fsgs and mpg that is membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis. They are the four primary uh, glomerular disease which can lead to nephrotic syndrome. Previously, out of these four, this used to be the most common in adults. But now, it is FSGS which is the most common in adults, all due to HIV. In HIV, we get a type of FSGS and particularly we get a type of collapsing. glomerulopathy okay well second important card condition is it can occur in diabetes mellitus sickle cell nephropathy is something very important and heroin use drug addiction heroin Reflux nephropathy, so called vesico uretric reflux, seen in children. And this can sometimes be caused by tubulo interstitial disease. But these three, in particular, I am talking about if you are getting one, any patient of sickle cell disease or a heroin induct or a child of vesico uretric reflux, most likely you are dealing with FSGS, a golden line to remember. So, let's learn the basic pathology. Again, we see the normal histology. The normal histology, this is the epithelial cell, foot process, epithelial cell, foot process, glomerular basement membrane. This is the endothelial cell. This is the capillary lumen where the blood is flowing and this is the capillary wall which is facing toward the basement membrane. Supporting cell is the mesangial cell. And here is the mesangial matrix. The normal pathology, okay. Well, now what happened in the pathology of these patient? In FSGS, there is loss of foot process. 
is food process are lost. Most of us uh, know that a loss of food process is seen in minimal change, but loss of food process is seen in FSGS also, just like minimal change. In minimal change, it was like this. This is the basement membrane, loss of food process. But here, there is loss of food process, but it get detached from the basement membrane. And in minimal change, there was no antigen antibody deposition, but here, antigen antibody deposition does occur, but it mainly occur in the, in the mesangium, especially in the sclerose pass. Those glomuli which are sclerose. Okay? So this is one thing that you got to know and uh, in minimal change, majority of time it resolved, minimal change, most of the time it get resolved of its own. Very rarely minimal change disease can progress to FSGS. Now many authorities do talk about that minimal change and FSGS, they belong to same spectrum of the disease. Now we call the term as focal and segmental glomerular process. What is the meaning of this? Why we call as focal and why we use the term as segmental? Let's learn the basic. Well, suppose these are the glomeruli. Okay, there are so many glomeruli but only few are involved, like this is in. So that's why we call it focal, not generalized. You can see in this, only this part is involved, rest all are normal. And segmental, suppose this happened to be the nephron, or this happened to the glomerulus, okay? Let me see, I show you one, something like that. So I've just given a twisted capillary. Here also may be a part of this. This is involved. Other part is normal. That's why we use the term as segmental, focal and segmental. So a quick recap that we only few glomeruli are involved and even in the one glomerulus, only part is involved, so-called focal and segmental glomerular sclerosis is there. With this background, now I show you a beautiful picture. So you can see a normal glomerulus. Let me show you normal glomerulus is this one. Okay. You can see capillaries. Blood is going on. Bowman capsule is there, and this is the place where filtration occurs. Pores are there in the capillaries getting filtered, and urine comes out. Now, what happened in FSGS? Look into this now. You can see only this part is involved, right? In one glomerulus, only part, this is the meaning what we call a segmental, is there. Okay, and that leads to sclerosis and around the capillaries impede removal of the waste and that's the reason, that means a part of glomerulus is not working, that is definitely going to reduce kidney function and definitely that lead to decrease in urine output. In other words, I can say it can go into renal. So, with this background, you can see, you can nicely compare the normal with the FSGS in one show is the part which is getting involved in this particular condition. Okay, I can mark with the, with the back pen. With this background of pathology, we move further. So, beautiful pathology, this is the part you can see which is involved and this part is normal, focal and segmental. Let's have a quick, uh, now what happened to clinical picture? Proteinuria is there. 
and it is non-selective protein urea in most of the cases. It may be in the nephritic range or it may be in the nephrotic range. That is, it may be more than 3.5 gram per day or it may be less than 3.5 gram per day. Well, second point is hypertension is a feature. Now, reduce GFR, rather I have given the reason also why reduce GFR because a part of a, num a, a large number of glomeruli are ne not involved and even a part of glomerulus not involved that contribute to reduce GFR or renal failure and abnormal tubular function and abnormal urine sediment can be there. That means hematuria can be there. Hyperlipidemia is a feature. In fact, hyperlipidemia is a feature of any case which lead to nephrotic syndrome. But complement level is normal. How we treat this condition? We use corticosteroids as the mainstay of treatment. Otherwise, we can use other immunosuppressive drugs like cyclosporine, tacrolimus can be used. It may or may not benefit. How about the prognosis? Prognosis depends on whether it is steroid responsive or not. Those who are steroid responsive, the prognosis is good. But where steroid do not work, then the prognosis is not very good. And in unresponsive patient with heavy protein urea, rapid progression to renal and state renal disease occur in few months only. Few months or few years. Quick failure occurs. Right? With this background, now let's talk about, let's discuss the question what we have. So we got a 20 year old man. Most likely diagnosis is answer is FSGS. Now why this is the answer, why not others? Option C is correct, that is focal and segmented glomerulus sclerosis. What are the key words there are in this question? 20 year old men, remember FSGS more commonly occurs in 2030, sickle cell anemia. I told you sickle cell anemia is one very predisposing factor. So three words I said, sickle cell anemia, heroin addict and vesicogeriatric reflux, if these three are there, they strongly indicate toward the pathology as focal and segmental glomerosclerosis. Generalized edema, why protein urea is in the nephrotic range and BP is high and due to nephrotic patient has uh, NSARCA, non-selected protein urea, BUN is 9.2, that means renal failure has not occurred yet. Okay. So, we are getting a young adult with non-selective protein urea with sickle cell, most likely diagnosis is FSGS, okay. So let's look into other options. Option A, minimal change is not, why? Minimal change is not related to NEFCA, not related to sickle cell anemia. Even membranous is not related to FCA sickle cell. MPGN is not related and IgA nephropathy is not related to sickle cell. Moreover, in ICA, okay. So, and moreover, uh, remember, this occur more in children in two to eight year. Our patient is a boy of 20 years. So, most likely diagnosed in this case is membranous glomerulopathy. This is more commonly seen in hepatitis B and hepatitis C. This also more in hepatitis B and C. But in this case, complement level is reduced and in this case, the complement level is normal. And IgA nephropathy again occur in children, 2 to 8 year, 1 to 3 days after sore throat, the child manifests as, uh, manifest as hematuria, 1 to 3 days. Okay, so this is the again unlikely. So, IG nephropathy is not a reason. So, now golden line to remember if you are getting a patient with non selected protein urea, hematuria in a HIV, sickle cell, heroin addict, or 
reflex nephropathy. Think about FSGS. Thank you very much for watching this video.